We're here with Mike Filey, Toronto historian, on the opening of the Dufferin Street underpass replacing the Dufferin Street jog. What are your thoughts on this afternoon? Well, it's another example of the city planning something about a century and a half ago and finally getting ready to do it. No, it's great. Obviously for the community, it'll make a real difference. That jog was always a, an awful pain. But good. I mean, this is the city moving ahead. It just moves very slowly, that's all. Very slowly. And are there any other examples across the city that uh, you've come across that might be candidates for something like this? Well, I don't think a lot of people know that, I, I should say, I think a lot of people don't know that uh, Simcoe Street has been continued uh, south of Front Street. There's yes. Another, uh, and there was no, as far as I'm aware, there was no party for it, no, no outpouring of any interest. But that's a major improvement to the downtown traffic, running Simcoe under the railway tracks. But again, that took, that took decades to do. Uh, things that you plan to do tomorrow will probably happen in somebody else's lifetime. But at least they did it. Um, the incoming mayor-elect actually had been quite vocal in his uh, opinions. And we have a uh, former councillor, Chris Corwin Kaczynski, of the area. You're a lot taller than I thought. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm standing out here. Ah, there we go. Um, we're just talking about where uh, ideas sometimes take generations or another person's lifetime. How do you feel today, having been the former alderman and councillor? i got to tell you that it's, uh, it feels great. I, I can say finally it's done a job that should have been done a long time ago but you know the money it always you have to deal with money you have to deal with expropriation of properties you have to do a lot of that kind of stuff so it took a it look, took a little bit of time for us to do it but i think that gratifying feeling for me is is that when i came here i met a young construction worker he's 28 years old and he said i worked on this bridge and then i thought about it we started to work I'm getting the money for this bridge before he was born. And, it was, and, and it's, it's a fitting thing that he was working on this bridge. Uh, and uh, I'm just thrilled. I'm really thrilled. It's going to be great for the neighborhood. And it's uh, uh, finally something that's taken so long to get here. And I, I was in the council in the late 1800s when this was started. But I can, I can tell you that uh, when I first got in in 1981, this was a prime uh, issue uh, for the people in the community. The community felt very strongly that this was an important issue that had to and finally, all our election promises came true. <laughs> well, congratulations, uh, former alderman, much. and uh, uh, I hope that this meets all, everyone's expectations. Yes, and I'm happy I was on the first bus that went through here, so I was happy about that. So there you go. All the good, best. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hi, this is Himi Syed here at Dufferin Street, just south of Peel. Behind me is the official opening of the Dufferin Street underpass. Formerly, we had something called the Dufferin Jog. Buses, traffic, cars, what have you, would uh, be southbound on Dufferin, reach Peel, turn east, go south along Gladstone, turn west on Queen, and then continue south on Dufferin. No longer will we have to do that. In 1897, the Queen Street subway, which was an underpass for Queen Street, was built and allowed for east-west traffic in this corridor, connecting Parkdale with the rest of uh, the downtown core, or uh, what today we would call Queen West Queen West. Today is uh, the first ever tr official traffic that will be able to go south underneath the uh, train tracks that were cutting off. Parkdale from the rest of the uh, downtown core. So here we are and let's see uh, how it goes. Thank you. 
man. Yes, dear. I wanted to take a picture with you. I'll do that. Carl? Yeah, no, it went on. It's okay. The people want to go on the sidewalk now. The the sidewalk. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. Well, I was with MTR at the time, right? So 93, I switched over to the looking here. One, two, three. feet away. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you. Okay, great. You're going to do it now. And Tony Cuto, he owns a 1930s Chevy, hopes to be the first car to drive south on the now Dufferin underpass. And they're getting ready for his car to drive south. Hello. How do you feel about uh, Toronto's shortest bike lane? It's, it's pretty nice. It's an important place to have a bike lane incorporated underneath an overpass. And uh, it should certainly help with the conflict zone down there. But of course, it would be nice to see it continue down Dufferin and up Dufferin. Okay, one, day. one day. Hopefully not 113 years as it took for this. It's possible. Give the snail space. That's another story. And good luck with your future endeavors. Yvonne Bambrick. And here we are. Tony Kuto's 1930s Chevy. Okay, and that'll be the first uh, speeding ticket. And we are waiting for the first TTC 29 Dufferin bus to head south or north. And that'll most likely officially mark the end of the Dufferin jog until there's actually construction here. And then we'll have to do it all over again. On the sidewalk, please.
Mr. Tonks. Oh, Corbin Kaczynski. Oh, yeah. KK. Hey, guys. That's right. It's coming down. Oh. Okay. The first one's coming down. And it's full. Toronto's shortest bike lane. Congratulations. And that's about it. The Dufferin Street jog is now the Dufferin Street underpass. And that's about it for right now. It took 113 years to get to today. Hopefully it doesn't take another 113 years to get projects like this done across the city where it's needed. Connecting two parts of the city where the railway right of way has separated for too long. Himi Syed, Dufferin Street underpass, no longer the Dufferin Street jog. Enjoy the day.